Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at half-frame cameras. When you shoot 35 millimeter through your SLR or your point and shoot or your rangefinder or whatever kind of camera that you have, you get something that looks pretty much like this. This is a standard looking negative of 35 millimeter and on it you can see your frame size. These frames are 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters in size and for the majority of photography cameras, this is just what you'll see. But over the years since 35 was introduced in the early 1900s, there has been some different versions of this frame size out there. And dating as far back as the 1910s, you could find cameras that were taking a different sized frame. These are half-framed cameras. Half-frame cameras are typically smaller and more compact than a standard 35 millimeter camera. And as the name suggests, they capture a frame size that is half the size of a normal 35 millimeter frame. So where a standard frame is 36 by 24 millimeters, a half-frame camera takes an image that's usually about 18 by 24 millimeters instead. Now these are cameras like the Ryko Auto Half, and the Olympus Pen, and the Yoshika Samurai. Many of these cameras were pretty basic with not a ton of features, so they were pretty much marketed with the appeal being the size and the number of shots that you could get on a single roll of film in comparison to normal sized cameras. See, because a half frame camera takes a frame that's half the size of a regular frame, you can fit twice the number of frames onto a single roll of film. So with a half frame camera on 24 exposure rolls, you can fit 48 Eight exposures on one roll. And on 36 exposure rolls, you can fit 72 exposures on a single roll of film. This was the big appeal of shooting half frame because when film is limited, you do sometimes want to stretch that roll out for as long as it can last. But by cutting your frame size in half, you're also kind of cutting your quality of the image in half as well. A smaller exposure on the roll means less detail and more grain typically. It would also change the way that you're composing your image a lot of the time as well. Many of these half frame cameras were still moving the film horizontally, but it took a frame that was half as wide, which meant that you were constantly shooting your images in portrait orientation by default. Some cameras were designed differently though, by moving the film through the camera vertically instead. This meant that you were shooting stills in the same way that 35 millimeter motion picture cameras operate by moving the film up and down, on a much smaller scale, of course. And a great example of one of these cameras is the Yashica Samurai. The Samurai is a funny little camera. It takes half-framed images and it's designed kind of to look like a handheld camcorder. Now it moves the film vertically through the camera so that instead of shooting in portrait orientation like a lot of half frame cameras, you're actually shooting in landscape orientation like a normal camera. It's also an SLR, so you actually look through the viewfinder and see through this lens. And a lot of half frame cameras were not SLRs. Now half frame cameras do range from the early 1900s to the 1980s and even some more modern ones from companies like Lomography. Ones in the 80s do have more automatic functions like the Samurai, which has DX coding capabilities so it can automatically register the film and just will decide exposure for itself. Another type of camera that also shoots a type of half frame are the Nishika and Nimslo 3D cameras that I've looked at in the past. Now these cameras do take multiple images at once, but the four images that they take in unison are all half frame sized images so that they can fit that many images onto the film to create the 3D effect when you put them all together. So really the appeal of using half framed images are the number of shots that you can hold on one roll if you're really looking to stretch out that roll of film that you've put money into. But of course you can can lose some quality of film unless you're shooting some of the higher end stuff with really nice fine grain. So then when you're only capturing half the size of a normal image, then you don't lose too much quality. Now with half frame though, you might receive a little something different back from the photo lab than what you are typically used to getting from a normal size 35 millimeter image. See a lot of labs are only set up to scan and print based off of a standard 35 millimeter frame size. So when they receive half frame film, they can still develop it and scan it and print it like normal, but it will come out looking different because it will typically be done two frames at a time instead of just a standard one like normal. So you might get back scans and prints that look like this with one image on one side and one image on the other, which means that you're gonna have to take your scans and do the cropping yourself later on. And then maybe you wanna get prints done from that instead so you can get them to do each print individually instead of two at a time. Well, half frame cameras are definitely not as popular as they were in the 1980s and even before that, 
there are still some interesting models out there that you can track down and play around with if you really want to experiment more and see what shooting half frame film is like. Again, these just take normal 35 millimeter film, so anything that you can buy, you can put in a half frame camera. I'll also throw a link to some different resources down in the description below, just in case any of you guys want to know more about these different cameras, what's out there, and explore more with shooting those half framed images. Hey, thanks so much for watching and checking this out, and I hope that you enjoyed and learned more about this kind of niche within a niche. And in the future, maybe I'll highlight the Yashica Samurai a little bit more on its own video. And subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post videos about all sorts of analog formats and niches and little quirks and different formats and films and cameras and just all this stuff all the time on the channel. And if you're at all interested in supporting the channel, there is a link in the description to the Analog Resurgence Patreon. You can hop over there and check that out and see what that's all about. And any support is just going to be able to allow me to do more of this stuff in the future and kind of branch out and do bigger stuff as well, like home developing and different film stock breakdowns and more camera stuff. So again, there's a link in the description for that to check that out. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Hey, it's time for my patron shout outs because it's the end of slash beginning of the month and there are some amazing people over on my Patreon who are showing a little bit of support for the channel and helping me to increase the kind of content that I want to do because I've got some exciting stuff kind of planned in the future. Abby Henderson, Audrius Radziviaticus, Bearded, Benjamin MacArthur, Cameron Talley, Carson Fuller, Futigu, Nakia Jones, and Ramblings from Canada. And because one of the patrons has shown a little bit of extra support on the Patreon, I have a special slide credit for them as well. So one extra special thank you to Carson Fuller for just showing a little bit of extra support over on the Patreon.